Two years to the day after January 6th, the man in charge of safety at the U.S. Capitol that day says it could happen again. Yeah, former U.S. Capitol Police Chief Stephen Sun lost his career after the insurrection. This week, he had his say in a new book just released. And he sat down today with investigative reporter Ted Oberg and the News 4 I team to explain why he says more needs to be done to protect our democracy. People have no idea what went on on January 6th. It's taken two years for Stephen Sun to get his thoughts out on January 6th. To be able to finally get this down on paper, I think it's a good way to start making making sure this never happens again. That day, Sun was the chief of the U.S. Capitol Police. The next day, he was asked to resign. Were you made a scapegoat? I think it was easy to point a finger at me uh, and force me to leave because, you know, I think in the long run, they're probably not going to like what I have to say. See it when you sleep? Um, sometimes I wake up. Sometimes I wake up. And when he does, it's those images of the approaching crowd he sees. That day, Sun watched them come towards him on a wall of monitors inside the Capitol Police Command Center. Usually when you see protesters approach a line of police officers, they'll you know begin you know, to shout, yell, things like that. This got violent really quick. And it was just the speed at which it got violent and they started tearing out the barricades that just surprised me. I felt a bolt of electricity go through my body when that happened. That is still with me today. It feels like I've had several cups of coffee. Sun's attention that day was split. He says in part trying to stay in touch with officers fighting to hold ground and on calls made pleading with military leadership to send in the National Guard. Help that didn't arrive for four hours. They had 150 guardsmen, some within eyesight of the Capitol with the riot gear. They didn't move an inch. In the days before the 6, the Pentagon limited the Guard's ability to act quelling riots. Investigations since January 6 confirm military leadership's concerns about deploying the National Guard, partly to avoid its improper use, partly to avoid the image of troops at the Capitol in all but the most urgent emergency circumstances. So much in here that Sund writes in his new book, lives. Courage Under Fire, about a call at 2.43 that afternoon as protesters were about to breach the House chamber. He was talking with military leaders. My frustration has reached a boiling point, he writes. There are shots fired in the Capitol. Is that urgent enough for you now? He says he ended the call to deal with the shooting. I was pissed. I was, I was mad as hell. I was watching my officers fight. And, and think about it, the absurdity, because every office in the Pentagon has a large screen TV, and they're watching the same thing I'm watching. My officers battling for their lives. And they're concerned about the look of the National Guard on, on Capitol Hill. Just couldn't believe it. I think the American people are owed an apology. And while Sun does take some responsibility in his new book, he saves his fiercest criticism for the intelligence failures, including those within his own department. I expected large, large groups. I expected maybe some um, pockets of, of, of issues around the perimeter, not what I now know was being planned. We now see that DHS, FBI was sitting on tons of intelligence. Um, some of that had gone over to my intelligence division and uh, they had produced some internal documents that never made it up to us. Some security officials dispute that. The I-team reached out to the FBI and DHS for a response to Sun's accounts. They both declined comment. How did you not know? You're at the head of this agency and it, and it seems there were a lot of people gathering this stuff. Mm -hmm. But you say you didn't know all the details that they knew. Absolutely. Sun says without more changes, starting with the sharing of intelligence and in how Capitol Police are overseen, another January 6th could happen. Two years later, do you think January 6th was the start of something or the end of something? I hate to say it, I think it's the middle of something. I think we've become such a fractured and divided country that, you know, tempers, tempers are flaring, people, you know, people anger fast. Um, and I think our politicians need to think about you know, how they use their words uh, because violent rhetoric can be dangerous. And I talk about it on both sides. I talk about it in the book. And we need to start acting like statesmen. As they look back on the 6th, the new chief of the Capitol Police Department says the department has changed, revamping the intelligence division, giving the chief the authority alone to call on the National Guard and mandating more rigorous planning before these giant events. Chief Sund says he isn't certain it's enough. At the Capitol, Ted Oberg, News 4 IT. In the last two years, more than 950 people have been arrested for their alleged actions that day. 
almost a third for assaulting or resisting officers. 40 of them have been found guilty at trial. Nearly 500 more have pleaded guilty. Almost 200 of them have already been sentenced to prison.